All right, live on video, stand by for audio. All right, good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So this evening, as I'm recording this new episode for you, we're bringing on yet another new co-host for you. And this is another one of these connections to the power of networking and these new services like Zippy Content that I've joked around with before because I don't know who they're going to send at me next. And I'm excited about this gentleman today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about alcohol awareness. We're going to talk about my passion, which is about leaning out the right way and getting healthy. But let me give you some more background on this gentleman. Uh, he's an Australian-American investor, entrepreneur, speaker, former sports center anchor on ESPN, and get this, his name, the host of the James Swanick Show podcast. So he's the CEO of Swanick Sleep, creator of blue blocking light glasses like I'm wearing right now called the Swannies. And uh, admittedly, I've heard of them, yes, too. There's just so many companies coming out now, which helps people sleep better. And the author of the 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge, which helps people reduce or quit alcohol. So a little bit more on this guy, man. Forbes listed James as one of the 25 professional networking experts. So we're going to geek out on that because I love networking. Uh, and that was at back in 2015. He's been interviewed by celebrities including Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, George Clooney, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know what? Without further ado, welcome to the show, sir. James, you are our new co-host today. Thank you, Scott. It's great to, to be here and to co-host with you. We're both rocking blue light blocking glasses, I can see. I'm wearing my company's glasses and you're wearing a competitor. So we're off to a good Some, start. Somebody else's company. And admittedly, the only reason why I ordered these was because I couldn't remember the name of yours and I was Googling and I was on Amazon Prime. These were the first ones to pop up and I was traveling and I wanted to block all the wonderful air, airline you know, light. And I said, you know what, let's just get these puppies. And then once yeah. I got them, I just stopped shopping. So, uh, yeah. but now I'm gonna have to order yours too. Because <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like to think ours are, ours are a little bit more stylish than most of them on there, but that's because I'm biased. You know, I designed mine and I created them. So, I, well, and, and for video watchers, yes, uh, this is not my normal style of glass. Uh, and I, I don't like the way they fit my face. So, if I was trying to be more stylish as well as scientifically healthy, um, I'm, I'm digging your style more. You know, it's funny. Um, people always say to me, um, hey, man, I saw another company come out with blue light blocking glasses. That's going to be tough for you. And I'm like, no, I no. celebrate it. I'll tell you why, because it increases awareness of the danger of blue light in general. And anything that increases awareness is doing is, is essentially free publicity for, for my company and, and, and my blue light blocking glasses. It's kind of like if you look at Coke and Pepsi, mm -hmm. it, their competition is great for cola, right? Yeah. Like, so Coke actually wants Pepsi and Pepsi actually, want, actually wants Coke and they want Dr. Pepper because all of those combined drives cola in general. So, well, and do you know the fan. history on that? Do you remember, oh, there was some, I forget how long back it was, but basically somebody from, I believe it was from Coca-Cola. This is way back, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a study of entrepreneurship right in business. And this came up on a business podcast I was listening to, but they discussed how somebody within the organization tried, they got the recipe of this, the, the, and tried selling it off to people at Pepsi. Mm -hmm. And then the people actually at Pepsi turned them in uh, wow. for, for theft because at espionage. So mm -hmm. Pepsi's like, listen, we don't care about your formula. We're big. You're big. As you just handed out, it's healthy competition. You, you both are helping each other strive. Now, granted, as a health nut, I don't drink soda. <laughs> yeah. But I, I get it because these are two big names, right, in the business world and, and, the, and the beverage space right now. Yeah, it's like, uh, I mean, Dave Asprey, um, the, the bulletproof coffee guy. Um, oh, yeah. He, he has his own brand of, of, of blue light blocking glasses as well. And he, he, about three or four years ago, was very instrumental in creating this whole movement around putting butter in your coffee and specifically putting grass-fed butter in your coffee. Are you referring and, to Kerry Gold? <laughs> well, you know what? I, I've been using Kerry Gold, but, but here's the thing. When I haven't been able to find Kerry Gold, which is the brand, which is a brand of grass-fed butter, I've, I've ended up buying another brand of grass-fed butter. So mm -hmm. you have to argue that, that that's great for grass-fed butter. You know, like what, whatever that other brand was that I bought, they've made more money because Kerrygold exists in the first place and because someone's talking about the, the, the market. So I think a lot of people, a lot of um, aspiring entrepreneurs worry that they're not going to start a business because it's already been done mm -hmm. or there's already companies out there doing it. Well, guess what? When 
when I decided to launch my style of, of blue light blocking glasses, which are called Swannies from my company, Swanic Sleep, there were already, you know, a dozen blue light blocking glasses out there. I just thought that they were, their styles were kind of ugly as sin. And I thought I can do a more stylish pair. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. And so that's kind of how we've separated ourselves from, you know, the, the companies that we're already selling, which is, I, I think that we kind of have the, the, the most stylish and the coolest of the hippest. If you want, I've got had celebrities like Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Super Bowl MVP Von Miller from the Denver Broncos wear the glasses and Game of Thrones actors. I, I've been living in Hollywood. I feel so left out, man. I need to get a pair now. And, <laughs> and Scott Mulvaney. Both, Hold on a second. Know. I got to do some screen sharing for our video watchers here because boom, there we go. I mean, obviously we can see them on your face, but here's the website. Again, ladies and gentlemen, as he hinted at, it's Swanick Sweet. But dude, check these out. I mean, they got some style. They're much better, nicer than mine are. <laughs> <laughs> and you do have a kid version. That's right. That was what made you guys unique. Um, I was trying to explain this to friends of mine who are open to learning more about Blue Blocker. And they do have a young, I think he's four. Uh -huh. And uh, he likes wearing sunglasses all the time. And I was like, listen, you guys got to make it cool but healthy because they do the classic pardon me, I'm going to call it absentee parenting where they just give him an iPad when he gets annoying. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, yeah. if you're going to do that, switch out his glasses. I don't know what you, if you want to care to ring in on that whole thing, but uh, yeah. I, I think this is awesome. Well, well, let me tell you, kids are actually the most susceptible to the dangers of blue light because as we age, our eyes actually um, develop um, a more of a barrier to, to blue light. But when we're very young, our eyes haven't developed as much. Mm -hmm. And so that blue light that is being emitted from an iPad or a TV screen or a cell phone is literally hitting their, uh, hitting their eyes. And, and we, we don't know exactly what damage it's doing, but all the studies that are now coming out are showing that it's causing um, uh, macular degeneration, which is a which is an industry terminology for just you know your eyes basically deteriorate, mm -hmm. um, attention deficit disorder, lack of concentration, lack of focus, lack of clarity, sleeping problems, um, and so every time you give your kid an iPad and say here go you know go and play some games or watch some cartoons or whatever, um, you're essentially exposing them to what I call a mini sun. So it's essentially like a mini sun. And these, yeah. these kids are staring into a mini sun. And like I said, well, studies that are coming out now are showing that that's causing a lot of long-term damage to your kids. So any eyewear that you can give your kids, whether it's a pair of my, my companies, you know, the, the kids' version of Swannies or another version, get some, some blue light blocking glasses on your kids because um, you don't want to be having to, to give them special glasses that, you know, for the rest of their life and, and eye problems. Well, it's interesting because I was just, um, so I, I'm a huge health and fitness now, right? So I love CrossFit's a part of my lifestyle. Yeah. And I was just this weekend, we were at a, a, they do a partner workout at the one gym that I drop into and every Saturday. And uh, some regular members there, they just had a newborn not too long ago and, and mom's ready to get right back into it, man. She's, she's there. So they come rolling in with the stroll and everything else and they got the, uh, the earmuffs on. Mm. But we're inside of a classic CrossFit style, warehouse style with all the fake fluorescent lights. Mm. And I literally asked her, I was like, hey, you want, are you going to put the canopy thing over? And she's like, oh, he's not outside. And I said, well, is he? <laughs> because we've got like the giant, fluorescent i mean for our listeners who aren't watching the video i mean these are like massive fluorescent lights that are probably four feet in diameter you know yeah. you know going like like five rows of them so it's bright in there and it backs up what you're talking about here how much are we exposing those young youthful eyes to yeah i mean even and even if we're not talking about kids right even if we're just talking about you and me or anyone who's listening how much time do you spend each day staring into your smartphone it's a lot. And if you're anything like me, like I, in the last 20 minutes before I go to sleep each night, I like to watch a little bit of HBO and, I, and I've progressively moved it from us, from a TV screen to my phone. Like I've got HBO now on my. Oh my yeah. Cell. The apps have gone crazy. Uh, you can just watch everything on your iPhone. <laughs> I mean, I'm watching, I'm watching Deadwood, which is an, an HBO series from the mid two thousands at the moment. I didn't watch it when it was out at the time, but 
It was like a Western series with Timothy Oliphant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's back when I had, well, I, I think I had cable. Or no, my roommate back then had a cable. I just, I haven't had cable in years. So, but, but again, now you can get HBO through your smart TV, through Hulu somehow, or however right. that all works. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm watching that show on HBO now on my cell phone, and I do it in bed in the last 20 minutes before I go to sleep. But here's the thing. I'm watching it while wearing a pair of my Swanee's blue light blocking glasses. So that blue light cannot penetrate the orange lens because orange is the opposite of blue. Mm -hmm. Blue cannot get through. Blue light is the light that, damp that, that stimulates your pituitary and your pineal glands, which tricks your body and brain into thinking that it's daytime, which means you have trouble falling asleep or you toss and turn in the night or you wake up in the morning feeling tired, even if you got seven or eight hours sleep because your sleep quality was compromised. So, right. so even though, so I haven't, I actually haven't, have not limited my screen, uh, my screen use. If anything, I've increased it. However, I've, I protect my eyes with these glasses while I'm using it. And, and I got to tell you, Scott, I sleep flawlessly. I mean, for a 42 year old man, I'm sleeping like, like as good as I'm sure a 40 something man can sleep. Well, I've got, I've got something. Well, here, we're going to geek out on this one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, be prepared here. I'm going to bring back for our longtime listeners. I hope, I'm, I'm very excited to see if you know this gentleman. So hold on a second. Well, actually, as soon as I share this screen, you will, his name is on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out there. This guy is a very viral, famous uh, neurologist. You ever hear that name? Oh, yeah, Dr. Jack Cruz. I've had him on the show. So nice. he is historically still the most downloaded episode I have ever aired. When, when that guy puts content online, he's got a viral following. It's ridiculous. Like we broke all of our download records when I aired his show and the YouTube has been doing pretty well too because <laughs> he was actually the very first YouTube version when I, I migrated to, he was episode 51. So that was, I forget when last year. Uh, so <laughs> we migrated the video on his show hmm. and it was hilarious because he has like a, he's down in New Orleans. So he's got like the New Orleans style bulb lights sitting behind a backdrop, but all the other lighting around him is off. He's got his blue blockers on and that entire episode, he's discussing how everything he was doing for us. He's like, I'm literally killing myself right now. He's like, mm. because I should not be in front of computer monitors with cameras and all this technology. He's like, but I'm doing this to get the message out there to you all. He's like, but normally I would not do this. He's like, this is all bad. So he, he takes it to an extreme level. But that's who I learned from. I, I learned about the power of blue blockers and how he's like, I guarantee you, you try these for, I think, I think he said like a week or two. Mm. And uh, he said, notice if your sleep makes an impact. Mm. Also, he also said, shut off Wi-Fi. Yeah, so, that's a big one too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I have a Wi-Fi router next to my desk here, but for performance, I hardwire it. But then as soon, I actually installed a secondary power strip under my stand-up desk here. So right before bed, I just flip that power switch off, shuts all the, the internet router and the Wi-Fi router down because my bedroom is in the next room for my fiance. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that. I, so the blue blockers already improved the sleep. Then here's some hacking for you. Two weeks later, shut the Wi-Fi off, literally two weeks later. Then I let it go for about a month and I was, I, I'm, I'm definitely sleeping deeper and I never had a problem with deeping, uh, like sleeping deep, but I was noticing it. And then there's been a couple of times where I forgot to turn this thing off. And I know it. I wake up the next morning. I'm like, what the hell were those weird ass dreams I had last night? Wow. So I, I only get weird dreams when I forget to turn the Wi-Fi off. Coincidence? I don't know. I'm not a neurologist. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's, there, was a, um, there was a movie about 10 years ago called Thank You for Smoking. It had uh, Katie Holmes was a minor part in it and a guy called Aaron Eckhart, who's a Hollywood That movie's actor. hilarious. It was, it yeah, was yeah, it's, serious and hilarious, but... <laughs> And, and, you know, his whole job was to make smoking um, kind of cool, right? And to market it in a way that, that people were was, was smoking. And I, and I remember the final scene of that movie uh, le left us pondering a question, which was, are we in like 10, 20, 30 years from now going to look back to this time and realize that, Hank, that putting a phone to our ear and using Wi-Fi actually was always just disintegrating our brain and mm -hmm. messing with our neurology and causing us this irreparable, irreparable damage 
you, you know, like when people first smoked cigarettes, they didn't realize it was, a, it was bad for your health. No. And then, and then finally people realized, and then it took them 50 years to kind of, you know, go through the process where now everybody knows it's not good for you. Maybe using Wi-Fi every single day and staring into a screen every single day in 30 or 40 years, we're all going to have this, sh- these shocking tumors or this brain damage or whatever. Like it's possible, right? We just don't know yet. Well, even Jack has talked about it. He said, look at the bombardment of frequencies around us. Our bodies were never designed. Uh, we, it, now, granted, who knows? Maybe this will trigger at the cellular level a, a DNA shift and a, a um, evolution, if you will. Hmm. But what's it going to take to get us to that phase of evolution? What, what kind of trauma, possibly, that we could be going through, as you're hinting out? Because let's be real, I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. So luckily, I had some brain cells working for me when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. And um, I just found it to be disgusting. So, but admittedly, the technology was there. Like I was using Bluetooth all the time. Now I don't have a Bluetooth headset. He, he's a big, he talks about that too. And a lot of his studies on his blog, on Jack's blog, it's like, man, anything you can do to reduce the concentration of frequencies close to you. Cause he basically talks about how like you're bringing up Dave Asprey, right? Great plug for that guy. He's one of those more famous biohackers, but I mentioned to Jack and Jack's like, yeah, he said, you know, I I followed him for a little while. He's like, but let me tell you something. I was like, okay, go ahead, Jack. He said, when you're ready, he's like, and you're ready to take this seriously. He's like, you could become one of my mitochondriacs. And I'm like, what is that? And he said, listen, biohacking's here. He's like, you need to get it to the mitochondrial level, like deeper into the cellular structure down to the, the, literally the the mitochondrial level. He's like, that's where we play. And I was like, all right, you can, you can drop the mic on that one. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Have you ever had anybody like literally challenge you to study more about your mitochondria? <laughs> Not about that. I've had people challenge me a lot. In fact, my voice is busted at the moment. You can probably hear it's a little bit creaky because I've been at a self-development seminar for five days where they, they, they broke me down and made me cry in front of 50 people. And then you know, Jeez, was this Tony, uh, Tony Robbins event or something? No, it wasn't Tony Robbins. And then hours later, and then hours later, you, you're screaming and, and like, um, you know, uh, uh, demanding that the universe gives you what it is that you want, and you're creating a vision and law of and, attraction and, and all that. Yeah, law of attraction. But it, but but it's funny because some of the exercises we were doing are so powerful because it it, it gets you into your body and physically manifesting what it is that that you want to the point where you're screaming and to help other people, um, you know, identify their vision and, and to really commit to what they want, you're helping them scream. And so you're screaming at them to get them to scream. So I, I've never done what, what you were suggesting that, that Jack Cruz is, was suggesting, but certainly in the last few days, I've been, I I've have been, a feeling you were hacking some of that mitochondria. <laughs> I think I was too, Scott. I think I was too. I mean, that's, that's, I've been to, I've only started getting into that level of, I talk a lot about self and professional development on this show because as you and I chatted briefly before we fired this show up, that's part of this target, right? Is like, we have this gift of gab. You know, you launch a podcast, I launch a podcast. That's just one domain or one platform out there. Then we, and I I talk about all the time about using social media for good. And I said, listen, if I can't push out quality content, or bring on quality people that have powerful messages, then what's the point? There's enough negativity out there, right? We need to get the good stuff out there. And to your point, the law of attraction, positive energy, attracting other positive energy. And sometimes we got to take it to that cellular level. And a lot of us aren't ready for that. So I've gone to some of those types of energy events, only a couple of them in the past year. And it's, it's draining, (laughs) but to your point, it's draining in the beginning. And then is it weird to say it's like a kind of like a rebirth coming out of it? I, mean, I don't know. What yeah. would you, how would you word that? Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, I, I can read a book a day. Um, and I have gone through periods where I do read a book a day for like 30 days in a row. And, um, and that's great, right? And I insert knowledge into my brain and I feel good because I feel like I'm well read. And, I, you know, I feel like I can drop a little in little book bombs at dinner parties that make me seem more intelligent than I actually am and (laughs) more worldly and wise and stuff. But, but I'll tell you, nothing beats experiential learning. So, so sitting down on the sofa and reading a book is amazing, but not nearly as amazing or impactful as 
experiential learning, which means actually doing stuff versus just reading on how to do stuff. So um, you mentioned Tony Robbins before. UPW, Unleash the Power Within, is a great event. You're jumping up and down. You're moving your body. That's an example of experiential learning. Mm. This event that I just went to in the last five days, absolutely. It's, it's like, you know. It's five fishing. days long. Yeah, it's a it's a marathon. So is that you're going? Is that more of like an immersion modeled event, right? Yeah, total total immersion. Okay, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually you're actually we're actually talking right now. I'm one week in to a three and a half week stretch where I'm except for three days doing nothing but self development um, uh, programs and mm-hmm. and and I'm not a self de- development junkie. I know there's people that just bounce from 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 you know conference to conference to program to program i just identified this particular month and say i'm going deep i'm just doing it so i've done a five-day course i'm about to go and do the advanced um at uh, landmark forum program oh yeah landmark i went yeah. to one of those when i was living in arizona yeah uh, uh and now i'm and then when i come out of that i'm going back and doing the advanced version of the of the program that i that i just did so i'm at the end of this month i am either going to be an absolute God, or I'm going to be the biggest <laughs> pussy talking about his feelings all freaking day known to man. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> I, you know what? Listen, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, uh, one thing that I've been able to grow within the past couple of years, and this is not self-promotion, but this is, I think what you're kind of hinting at is this level of vulnerability that we reach as man. And this is not to take anything away from the ladies, but uh, we as men, are afraid to show, I guess, that softer side or that vulnerable side. And I've talked about this on multiple episodes uh, because I'm, I'm now engaged as of August, you know, of last year, 2017. And I said I would never get engaged. I would never be get married and blah, 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 blah. And I'm 40 now. And, uh, and she actually broke up with me <laughs> because I still had my head so far up my ass. I've literally mentioned this multiple times on the show. And because I, I want people to hear that, that's like, guess what? I was that guy. I was the, cause I'm a former firefighter. That's when I lived out in Arizona. So I did the wild and firefighting and I thought that was an amazing adventure, but I was so stuck from that mindset from that. Cause I went from corporate life to firefighting to entrepreneurship. And it's like, whoa, I didn't really calculate what that process was going to be like. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, through self-development and professional development, I'm still working on it, but it's like, wow, you just need to shut up, bro. <laughs> And maybe soften up a little bit and let people in. And that ends up making you even more attractive and even more magnetized. And I, actually, a key word that a psychologist that I had on the show, they loved that I used it. They said was, it makes you more real and approachable. So I don't know what you're getting. If, if you got some of that out of this past five days. Yeah, I can relate to that a lot. In fact, um, vulnerability and intimacy has been, have been two things that I have been sorely lacking in my adult life and I hired a, an intimacy coach, if you like, I mean, um, mm. 12 weeks ago specifically, um, to get me out of my head and to, or, and to be more vulnerable and to learn what the heck vulnerability even means. Now, just to put this in context, um, I grew up in Australia in an Australian manly culture where oh, the you, outback. Yeah. <laughs> you are not encouraged to talk about feelings or encouraged to share about um, problems that are going on. It's just get on with it. Be strong, mm-hmm. yep. man, just suck it up and just, you know, deal with it. And so I've been living like that for you know 25 years of my, of my adult life. Now what, what I found to have happened was that I got very good with women in, in terms of seduce and conquer which mm-hmm. means I was very good at creating attraction. But I would start these romantic relationships and then I would sabotage them and I would find ways to get out of it and I would blow them up. And, and I did that because of a fear of intimacy and a lack of vulnerability. Um, so it gets to a point, I'm 42 years old now, uh, I got to a point last year where I, I, I finally kind of realized the pattern and I took this 30,000... 30,000 foot view of my life and went, maybe what you've been doing has worked for you in the short term for, you know, fun little romantic liaisons, but it's, it ain't working for you long term. It's Mm. not, 
you're not happy. You're not as happy as you could be. And you're single, you don't have a family and having a family is important to me. Having children is important to me. So that was when I finally went, you know what, I'm going to start looking into this. And so the last 12 weeks I've, I've just, you know, leaned in as, as much as I can. And, you know, two days ago I was crying in front of 50 people in a, in a, in a conference room in Long Beach, California. And it felt terrific. <laughs> and, and, and that's, it's, you know, it's the first time you do it, it, it actually feels awkward and embarrassing. And you're imagining friends of yours in Australia looking at you, shaking their head going, what are you doing? You've let these Americans grab a hold of you and now you're crying in front of freaking people. Stop being a fucking, sorry, excuse my language. Stop no, no, this, it's, this is open editing, man. We don't give a shit. <laughs> let your passions roll, brother. Yeah, I would imagine them saying, just stop being a, a pussy, dude. Just like, what are you doing? But I've got to say, um, I don't want to say I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, but I will say that I am certainly uh, embracing going deep and getting triggered and bringing up some nasty, awkward stuff for the sole purpose of growth. And so far it's, it's working. It's not pretty, it's messy, but I have to say that it's working. Well, I could tell you, man, I just reading your bio. I mean, you've, you're recognized by Forbes 2015, right? You've done the, you've got to in, you know, include interviews like with like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, George Clooney, Arnold, it's, you got a good track record, right? So the average person who doesn't, isn't talking like you and I are talking right now, they would look in like, oh man, that guy's got it all, man. Look who he's connecting with. Look at the ladies he's dating. But to your point, it's also surface level. And a lot of us get on that autopilot, that train, and we don't realize it's even happening until one day you get derailed and it's like, whoa, what have I been doing? And I know that was me, man. I, I, like I said, I'm not perfect yet. Believe me, my fiance still likes to call me on my shit, <laughs> but she's like, uh, compared to the guy I was when I first started dating her. And she's like, I don't ever want to see that guy again. She's like, that's fine. Like for the first month, she's like, but then she's like, I don't, I don't have time for that. Right. Mm. Like they want, they want to know that you are willing, you could be the tough guy, but they also want to know you could, you could be real. And they, that, that builds that trust. And I didn't realize that. I thought that that, again, like, dude, I was a farm kid, man. I grew up on a farm, learned how to work hard. I had multiple jobs my whole life. I mean, I always had to work for everything. So I let that be my claim to fame. Mm. And that's all just me word vomiting, right? Like, okay, but your actions should sell like everything. You don't need to say anything. Just, just do. And yeah. I think that really comes back to what you and I are talking about. It's like, we can say that we're working on ourselves, but are you going to actually do it? Are you going to get vulnerable in front of hundreds of thousands of people um, and show others that at least you're willing to do it too? I haven't cried in front of a couple hundred people yet, uh, <laughs> but I, I can tell you, I've never, you know, I'll be transparent. Um, a few weeks ago, the, uh, the only grandmother I knew passed away and my fiance, she, she climbs into bed with me and she said, so are you going to get real or are you just going to sit there and, you know, tough through it? And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's just like, come on. She's just like, you said you didn't know any of your other grandparents. Like my mother's parents passed away before I was old enough to know who they were. Uh, my, my, my dad's dad left them when he was young and started a whole other family in Florida. Like crazy, right? And this is the only grandmother I knew, but she was never really personable as a person. She was very standoffish. And, um, but she was still my grandmother. And Boom. Once she started cracking that nut, man, I was, I was balling and I was like, I can't believe I'm crying right now, but let it flow. And then I didn't, I haven't shed another tear since because it was, it was such a purging experience. It doesn't mean I still don't love her and I miss her, but it's like, I needed to get that out, man. And it was, yeah. it was deep. I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. Well, thanks for, thanks for sharing that. Um, and you know what? I don't know whether you felt this when you were crying, but when I cry, there as good as it feels, you, there's also that part of you where you kind of like, can't believe I'm crying in front yeah. of people right now. Or yep. Maybe for you, did you feel like I can't believe I'm crying in front of my fiance right now? Yeah, I was kind of like uh, I was trying to choke it back, and so to keep it going, she's crafty. She starts telling the story about her grandmother that died. And, and then she starts crying. <laughs> so I was like, so later on I called on that. I'm like, 
what was that all about? And she's like, I don't know. She's like, it just seemed, it seemed to make sense to start telling you that too. And I'm like, yeah, because then your cry was making me cry. And I'm like, then I'm trying to toughen up for you. And because I thought that's what I had to do. And she's like, no, that's not what you had to do. This is what you need to do. She's mm-hmm. like, you're too type A all the time. It's okay to let go. We're in the safety of our home. It's all right. And, and it's funny because we joke around about it. We're both two type A athletic personalities and we're always worried about is that going to work or not. And that experience as I'm talking to you right now, I'm like, man, that's a good sign that this may actually work <laughs> because uh, she got me to just shut the hell up and, and, and live into it, man. And like live through it and don't hold back. So, yeah, well, that's great. And, and you know, whether you and I or any other man in, on the planet likes it or not, our job description in relationships ha- has changed. Yes. Um, it, it's changed. And, and it used to be go out and hunt and kill and provide and be tough and deal with the stuff and take care of business. But, you know, with, with, with women now, you know, earning parity in pay and in the workplace and, and the movement um, starting, um, you know, late last century, um, now they're demanding more of us. And, and that more is vulnerability. Mm-hmm. and emotions so it's um it's uh you know it's challenging it's not it's not uh it's, it's messy sometimes right scott uh, it's, you know what and i think you're gonna agree with me on this man if it was easy we shouldn't be even trying it right like we should be challenged at least for me like me uh, me being the type a personality actually i ended up saying this to myself years ago when she broke up with me i was like all right Again, for our listeners, man, was not expecting to go down this track. <laughs> so, but it's, I, when she broke up with me, I was like, and I, it, it hurt me. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm already, I've already been through that, right? So I'm already used to, I've already put in the reps, so to speak, right? You know, I'm, I've been the bachelor for a long time. It's not a big deal, but then it bothered me. And then I was, I ended up taking all that self-help energy and I poured it for that three month break into trying to understand relationships, love and everything. I'm not kidding you, man. I, I downloaded what you just talked about right now as far as what you guys are going through. Dude, I downloaded love books, videos, uh, even some of that stupid crap about, oh, how to become the uh, ultimate influencer and, and like control the room because I thought that was what it is because I, okay, I'll just gotta, I just got to like woo her back. All that crap. And a lot of that self-discovery work ended up digging me deeper into the fact that it's like, okay, you're upset about this because maybe this girl actually made an impact on you. But more importantly, I was upset with myself because I said, you never even gave this chick a chance. I kept her service level. I never, and, and then I reflected back to myself. I'm like, okay, I bragged, right? That I've, I've worked my way through everything and I've had multiple jobs and I paid my own way through college. And I even took a risk, left the corporate world, did the wildland firefighting out West. And yeah, that's cool. And it's in my brand. But part of that story is I did all these risks, but I never risked my heart. And that was the wake up call right then and there. I was like, holy shit. I, I call my, you know, I, I go skydiving and mountain bike. I've done it all, man. I mean, mountain bike racing, CrossFit guy, whatever. But it's like, dude, if you're not even going to risk your heart, are you really that much of a risk taker? And that was like the epiphany. I was like, holy shit, that was like a freaking atomic bomb going off, man. So I don't know if that's some of what you're starting to realize with your own work. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It, it is crazy. And I'll tell, you, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's the hardest thing in the world, I think, for me. Just to, just I'm to, with you. <laughs> just to open up. I mean, I, 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 had, I hugged my father for the first time in 30 years, three, three or four weeks ago. Oh, and damn. That, and that was, that was challenging. And then, um, did he initiate or you? No, I initiated it because of the work I've been doing. I did a, I did a landmark forum event, um, down in Brisbane, Australia. And, uh, for, if you're not familiar with that, um, I, I don't want to reveal too much about what it is, but it, you know, it's a self-development program and you go, no, the it. landmark dude, I, like I said, I, I went to one of the events when I was living in Arizona, a friend of mine invited me. She's like, Hey, I think you should come check this out. And, I ended up not going through the full blown program because I think I wasn't ready yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not everybody's ready yet. Everybody looks at it. It's like, Oh, is that some kind of cult or is it the Kool-Aid thing? Right. You know, it, what is all this? Because we don't understand it. 
because we're That's not right. ready yet. That's right. So, and one of the things that they do in that program is they encourage you to go out and phone people close to you and have seemingly awkward conversations. <laughs> things like say, I love you or no more, or I break up with you or I'm sorry. Um, or I'm going to support you more or, um, um, I feel like you ruined my life, but it actually was my fault. You know, like soup, all these things that we leave unsaid, they kind of, they don't force you to do it, but they kind of force you to do it because you get, you're so caught up in it. And it, they, what they do is they just push you over the edge a little bit to actually take action. Um, because, you know, I, I've read books before that told me that I should say to my dad that I love him, but I never did it yeah. until I was made to do it, kind of made to do it then you kind of like it works the muscle right and then and then it just you start to open up it sounds like you've been going through that yourself scott you know we'll take a page out of the health and fitness book because and we'll, we'll we will mention this during the show here but i mean ladies and gentlemen we're going to talk a little bit about alcohol too because i kind of hinted at, it at the beginning of the show but it's part of part of what you're doing but it's to answer your question if we're not getting out of our comfort zones if we're not challenging ourselves, if we're not taking risks and risking failure, we're not learning, we're not gaining. You're just paused. You're just stuck in this like never ending loop and expecting things to change or improve. And it's like, well, get out of your freaking comfort zone and take a freaking risk and do that awkward thing that you maybe even dreading for a while. And then obviously maybe a program like you were going through finally gets you to you know, pull your head out of your ass and say, all right, man, go do it, man. Like go initiate that freaking hug with your dad. Mm. Cause I can tell you, Scott William Mulvaney is how it's pronounced in Ireland. All right. I have Irish bloodlines. We are not the closest family as I hinted with my grandmother. And when I left to go do the wildland firefighting, I think that was the wake up call to my family. Like, holy shit. Like Scott may not come back. Right. Mm. Um, and I didn't realize that I'm in Mr. Adrenaline junkie mode and you know, I'm in my thirties. So I think I know everything. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to go for it. But then all of a sudden, like when I come back and visit on the holidays, there's more hugs. I'm like, Whoa, mm-hmm. like my dad initiated the hug. But mm-hmm. before it was always like a, you know, the light, Oh yeah. <laughs> the it's light like tap. The, sort of like tap. The awkward or, or the side <laughs> hug kind of like It's yeah. like the side awkward thing that some of your bros do. And um I mean it's it's gr- I've gotten better at it, man. Like, I, I do the full double arm wrap hug with my with my closest friends now too. I mean it's grown. So it's it's like listen, if you're gonna hug, you you properly hug. I mean, I even had awkward hugs with my own sister. Like my sister would be like, eh. It's weird. I'm like, why, why it's are we, weird. it's <laughs> my own weird. damn sister. Like, why yeah. are you awkwardly hugging me? Like, Give me a proper hug, sis. Um, there you go. That, <laughs> inside world of my family. So it's, but it's, it's changed. So, yeah. and when I came back and talked to my family more about it after the firefighting adventure and they were like, you know, long story short, it was, you know, hey, it was kind of a dick move, Scott. <laughs> like, we were always worried about you and we know wow. you're an, we know you're an adult and everything else. But then I, you know, it took a couple of years to get that truth out of them. And like, Oh yeah, that sucked. Like we did not like that at all, <laughs> but that was very, they said, they called me on my shit. They said that was selfish. Mm. And I was like, you know, what do you mean? It was selfish. So I get all defensive. And then it's like, wait a minute. And now again, self-development pull your head out of your ass, you know, look, get outside of yourself and see how other people are seeing you. And it's like, Whoa, I did not realize that I was, it was Scott's on a mission and fuck everything else. (laughs) So uh, yeah, just to speak to that, then thanks again for sharing that Scott, but just to speak to that before we get onto the alcohol talk, um, yeah. At this event that I was at in the last couple of days that we did an exercise where you had to step up, and walk over and face the person that you found most attractive in the group. Mm. And also, and then a minute later, you had to walk over and stand and face the person that you found the least attractive in the group. Whoa. Uh, yeah. And, then, and so you're sitting there wow. like amongst 50 people and you go, oh, this is going to be so embarrassing because there's a cute girl over there and now I've got to go and face her. And then when it's the least attractive, you're like looking around going, oh man, I'm going to have to go over to that guy over there that I just totally judge and think he's a complete you know, idiot. 
and then they're going to probably make me tell tell them why and they do so oh, damn have, oh man so, so here's the most fascinating thing about it though right i had on a group of 50 people i had the most number of people find me least attractive least really least attractive. yeah and 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 75% of the people who walked up to me and faced me said the same thing. And the same thing was, is that I had a superiority complex that I came across as being a Mr. Know-it-all and that I, that they, that, that I had this opinion that I, that, that I was better than other people or more intelligent or knowledgeable than other people. I got to tell you that was some heavy stuff to learn. That's got to hurt. I mean, that's, and at the same time, Scott, it was the most beautiful gift that I could ever have been given because it's like, huh, I got to wake up to myself. And then having a conversation, like I phoned my ex-girlfriend when I was there to apologize for stuff. And I dug a little deeper with her and she told me, James, I didn't like the way that you spoke to Uber drivers and to the barista at Starbucks. And the people in the service industry, mm. you always came across as if you're like, your shit didn't stink. Like you were just like, you were dismissive and abrasive. And I'm like, was that like back during your ESPN days and stuff like that? Um, no, it wasn't as far back as that. This is only like, I've been doing this stuff recently. Oh, Appar- apparently. Okay. apparently. <laughs> I mean, when I, and when I say recently, I mean like in the, you know, in the past like year or two. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So I'd love to be able to say, oh yeah, it was years ago when I wasn't, you know, when I was a complete douche, but it seems seemingly I'm still have douchebag qualities even now, even after like, you know, going through a whole lot of stuff. So I think uh, in an uncontrolled way, we all have a little DB in us. I just, I, I, I catch myself once while I'm like, oh, don't be a douchebag. That's not cool, dude. Like, you know, cause you're, you're still working. You're still putting in the reps. It's like going to the gym, man. Like you, if you got to get better at something, you have to keep practicing it. And mm. that's what your program is getting you into. It's like, all right, man, get out of your comfort zone, mm. rip the damn band-aids off. Let's start putting in the reps because it is going to get easier. You're going to get more experienced. You're going to get more knowledgeable. Yeah. Um, I never would have brought this up back when I launched the show, you know, in September of 2016. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I have to pull my audience. I wonder how... The long term, the long term listeners. I wonder if they could compare back then. I don't know. I'll have to ask them maybe. But that's it's that's the point, man. Like we're, I think I think we're reaching new levels of growth. Mm. That's actually more exciting too. And maybe that mm. it's okay to be a little selfish about that. Like, dude, what if you grow and you attract even more success because you stop being a douchebag and you it treat people like you want to be treated, right? It happened, it happened it happened not one hour ago before we got on this interview i was walking down i'm in santa monica as we're recording this i was walking down the street talking to someone and there was a balloon that came running this blue balloon kept came walking down the street on montana avenue in santa monica and i looked around and i saw this woman pushing a pram and this kid was screaming because he obviously lost his balloon yeah. and so i went to go chase to get the balloon but the wind was so strong that it kept it was always like just couldn't out. get it 10 yards ahead of me. I went like a block and a half trying to chase this stand balloon. And I finally caught the balloon and I turned around and the look on the mother's face was just so thankful. She was just like, thank you so much. And then- Cause we, the kid wouldn't shut down. <laughs> the kid, the kid and then we ceremoniously gave the balloon back to a kid in the pram and the kid stopped crying. And the, the, the way that the mother looked at me- True, pure just, gratitude. Just, just love. Not yeah. love in a in a you know romantic way. Just just love. Just like thank you so much for what you did for for me and my my child right now. Yeah. And and you know I, I I mean I like to think that before doing this four or five day program that I did that I would have done the same thing. But I don't know. Maybe I would have seen the balloon and gone, oh yeah, I'm on a call. You know, I'm not going to go chasing the balloon. That's but awesome. I, did. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It, cause it's it, it doesn't need to be anything that big. All right. I think. I think so many people are stuck staring at their damn phones without their blue blockers on and, and, and they miss the balloon floating by, right? And they, then they step in front of a cab and the cab slams on, the, on their brakes or an Uber and, and they honk the horn and you get upset because you almost got hit by the car. And it's like, you were the dumbass staring at your phone without your blue blockers on. That's got to get thrown in there. Uh, but it's like, that's, 
that's what's happening right now. Mm. I mean, that's, that's happening hundreds of times a day, if not thousands in, in cities like New York City, right? Just due to population density. Because I was just up there and it just drives me nuts. Like just, I don't understand how people are alive. <laughs> just walking into the streets on their phones. I don't, I don't know. It drives me crazy. So, man, I'm excited for you. This is, that's pretty cool. Uh, so you're, you're still like, I think coming down off of the balloon experience. <laughs> I don't know, man. It feel, does it feel good? I mean, I, I was saying to the person I was talking to on the phone when I chased the balloon because I had my earbuds in, afterwards I said, I, well, during it, I said, hey, man, I'm really sorry. I'm chasing a balloon down the street. Just hang on a second. <laughs> so he, he got to hear the whole thing. And at the end of it, and I said, I said, man, I am on fire today. Like life today is damn good. Feels good. It just feels good. And what did he say? He, he laughed and said, that's awesome, man. Like, and then and get this. Here's the other cool thing. He goes, dude, you've inspired me to sign up for, for, for Landmark. Now, to be clear, I didn't just finish Landmark. I finished another one. Yeah, but, yeah a different program. But, but uh, I said- But he okay, knew cool. you'd already done Landmark too. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And I said, okay, cool. And I said, well, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., you will have signed up for a Landmark course deal. And he goes, all right, man. All right. So tomorrow morning, we'll see. We'll see if he's done it. You know, I, uh, you don't need to get through, here's, here's a wake up call. You're a fellow podcaster. You don't need to get through to hundreds of thousands of people. You just need to get through to one. If you get through to one, hell one a day, that's exciting, right? Like you get through to one person a day positively. Like mm -hmm. as you're telling this, like I, I can't help it. I'm thinking about this morning. I haven't stopped by my local Starbucks in a while. Cause I, you know, I, I love doing my home French press thing. And I was in a hurry this morning. I had to get out on a business trip. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to swing by the old and, 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 and the regular crew is there. And the one girl just is always nice to me. She's like, Hey Scott, do you get in the regular? Like she remembers me. I'm like, I didn't know I was that much of a regular. And so I just, I'm just standing there with all smiles. I do the thing with the, you know, the app thing and everything at Starbucks. And then uh, I'm standing there and I just turn. I was like, so how's your day been going? She's like, what do you mean? They just started. This is early. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. I'm like, so? I was like, how is it? And like, she wasn't ready because she's the one standing there doing all the barista stuff. Mm. Nobody asks her how her day's going. Mm. And luckily it wasn't busy. And she paused and she's like, you know, thanks for asking. It feels pretty good actually. And she's mm. like, I was, and, I, and then I paused. And I was like, people don't ask you that a lot, do they? And she's like, no, they don't. <laughs> so we had a good laugh about it. Um, but like something as simple as that. Because if you, if you sit there and people watch in Starbucks, people are buzzing in and out. And now you can order stuff to go from your app. So now you buzz in even faster. Like without, like you just go in and grab your shit and leave. And it's like, did you at least thank the person? who did all the work for that. Yes, you paid for it, but somebody still put all the work in. Yeah. So there's, there's something like just giving somebody a thank you. Yeah. And I, I always do that when I win it. Maybe that's why they like me. I don't know because I always do thank yous. I always give a thank you. I'll even yell it. I'm like, if, if I'm in a hurry, I'm thanks gang. I'll just say it to the whole thing. And I give a big wave and walk out. <laughs> I can see how you're very likable, Scott. I can see how you do that. Well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's just, uh, admittedly, because maybe, maybe I'm just in a different place in the timeline than you, but I, tr I try and catch myself to get myself to do that now. It's become a conscious effort. Yeah. And, and I, I try to explain it to a buddy of mine. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, just, just try and force yourself to slow down a little bit. I'm like, could I have given a thank you or a hello? Yeah. Like I had a guy, I opened the door today and the guy was coming in and really like, oh, hey, how's your day? The guy was like deer in the headlights. Yeah. I was like, have a good day. I kept walking by. <laughs> and the guy just turned for a second. I like, well, I'm like, I think he thought I was crazy. But, you know, he almost rocked into me. And I was just like, hey, have a good day. That was it. So I wasn't expecting anything in return. It's actually, yeah. kind, of, it's actually kind of funny. It's kind of fun to catch people yeah. off guard. So make you should it, have fun, fun with it. Have fun have with fun it. Have fun with it. Make fun, yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's, 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 let's say serious. We, we've been, I love where we're going, man. This is like a whole other podcast, dude. I'm loving this. This is just some good energy getting bounced around here. Are you, you're yes. out in Cali now, man. So this is East coast talking to the West coast. So there you go. Uh, hopefully when we air this, this will, this will bring the whole country together. Maybe everybody says hi to their Starbucks uh, barista tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> I actually have listeners in Australia, so maybe there's no Starbucks there, but listen, 
I do want to talk about alcohol. And in honor of you tonight, I did not have a drink tonight. <laughs> so um, I, I made, I, cause I, I, I was doing some food prep tonight and I'm sitting there and I'm, I love cooking and I got my, I got my butternut squash and I got my, my, uh, my, my grass fed, you know, beef and going on. I got all this good goodness happening. I'm like, Oh, you know what? A little glass of red wine. I'm like, no, I, I'm hanging with James tonight. I was like, I, I really dug into your program. I like the messaging of what's going on there. Um, so I want to make sure we bring that to light on this show uh, before we end anything else, because I got a kick out of your little intro video on the site. <laughs> so um, you have a photo with somebody that a lot of us know on, in the movie world and TV world and our friends world. Uh, you you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Well, we'll just screen give, share here. Just to give, uh, give context. I, uh, Boom. there we go. There I am. If you paused watching, it. <laughs> if you're watching on the video, you can see this. And if you're not, then there's a, if you go to the website, 30 day, no alcohol challenge.com, you'll see a, a very unflattering photo of me, um, standing next to, uh, Jennifer Aniston, the uh. Hollywood actress who played Rachel in the TV show friends and, and who's been in many Hollywood movies was the, the formerly married to, to Brad Pitt. And um, I put the, f the photo up on, my, on this website, 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com, to just to show a before photo of me um, versus the after photo now. So the before photo was when I was um, drinking. Um, now, and just to be clear, I was never an alcoholic, okay? I never was. I never felt that I was by any, by any study or test. Um, there's no way I was an alcoholic. But I, what I was, was a social drinker. And mm. I was probably what society would, would describe as, you know, like a, just a, a normal social drinker. I, I would have a couple beers or a glass of wine at night with dinner. At the end of a, a hard day's work, I might relax with a, you know, like a drink or two. On the weekends, maybe I'd drink a, a bit more. But, I, you know, I, it wasn't like I was getting drunk all the time. I got drunk on occasion. Right. But... You know, I, drinking was just the norm. And so what happened was, is that in 2010, I was in Austin, Texas, and I went to the, to the South by Southwest Festival. And I flew in on a Friday night and I went out and I went to one of these free parties where they give you free drinks. And I just had two drinks. All I had was two gin and tonics, so two Bombay Sapphire gin and tonics. Okay. And I went home and I, back to this hotel, I should say. And I woke up the next morning and for whatever reason, I just, I just felt really, really average. Like I, I had a bit of a hangover. I could taste the liquor in my mouth from the night before. Oh, yeah. No. Um, and I looked in the mirror and I was like, I was weathered, man. I mean, I, I had wrinkles and I'd put, on, I'd put on about 25 pounds in the course of a year, which isn't a huge amount, but it's, a, it's noticeable, right? It's a noticeable amount. I had little fat rolls kind of like hanging yep. over my, over my, over my little and little inflammatory storage. Yeah. I wasn't fat, but I was like, You're puffy. You know, I, was, I was puffy. I was like the marshmallow man. Yeah. And, and, and I went to this IHOP with, you know, the international house of pancakes, which was right next door to the hotel. And I sat down in this IHOP and I looked around and there were really, um, you know, unhealthy people eating all you can eat pancakes with whipped cream and maple syrup. And I'm sitting there with a little hangover and I just feel tired and average. I'm not sick. I'm not depressed. I'm not even like a three or a four out of 10. I just felt like a five out of 10. You know, it was just like blah. Yeah. And so I said to myself, you know what? I'm just going to take a 30 day break from alcohol just to see how it feels because I want to get out of this kind of feeling of mediocrity. And so that's what I did. I literally started right away and I went 30 days without drinking. I lost 13 pounds in 30 days. I slept better. My skin got better. I had more clarity and focus. I realized I was starting to attract a higher caliber of person into my life. And then at the end of 30 days, I went, ah, I might just keep going and see how long I can go. And that was eight years ago. I haven't, I haven't touched any alcohol since that night in Austin. It's been strong eight, work. Yeah. It's been eight years and not because I was an alcoholic, but just because I liked how it felt. And I got to tell you in the, in that time, this is what's happened to me. I got my dream job hosting sports center on ESPN. I became an entrepreneur. I had 
I, I got better looking. It's amazing how better looking you get when you quit alcohol. I got to tell you. Um, I don't think you necessarily get better looking. It's just your body finally can unleash your true self. There you go. There you go. You, here's another way of saying it. You look the way nature intended you to look. Nice. I yeah. like it. I like it. And, 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 you know, now I discovered going to the gym. So now I've got muscles. I discovered uh, paleo style eating. I flirted with meditation. I, I, just, I just started doing all of these amazing healthy habits were triggered by breaking one habit. So because I stopped drinking, that inspired me to eat healthier, mm -hmm. to, to, to do meditation, to uh, attract a higher caliber friend, to be a more agreeable type of person. By that, I mean just a nicer person. And, and now, eight years later, I mean, it's night and day. But look at the before photo of me that you just you know, ceremoniously shared of me. Scott, thank you. <laughs> I had to pause it there for you. <laughs> and I'm going to share that again. Oh, there you go. <laughs> We're yeah. all about transparency. <laughs> Boom for the video watchers. So it's, it's, yeah. it's important cl a clarification there. Mm -hmm. And hold on. Do I still have the other photo up here? That's, that's your other alcohol buddy. I got to introduce you to her. Um, no, it's not coming up right now, but here we go. Go back to this one on your primary website because that's more recent, right? Yeah, that's more recent too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where was distance, that at? Right? Uh, that was speaking at the Hollywood, uh, at the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. Okay. Uh, I was speaking at a an event um, run by Ty Lopez, who's a social media entrepreneur. Oh yeah, I've I've uh, I go to well the past two years. I'll be going again this year to Thrive Make Money Matter. Ty's been there every single year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Cole Hatter, Cole Hatter runs that. He's a he's a he's someone I've had on my show, and is a is a yep. a nice, a very nice man. This um, was uh this was just hold on, this the lighting here is awful. There we go. All these names, I like I can't you can't read them. All these names were people that I had on the show from just the first year of Thrive. <laughs> I have to make like a I'm gonna make a graphic out of these, I, and my editor take all of their show graphics. But that's that's just 16 people from from 2016 into 17. I've had many more since then because I've gone to two back-to-back -back thrives. But mm -hmm. Ty Lopez, major social media influencer. Cole, mm -hmm. love his four purpose uh, teachings yeah. from Thrive Make Money. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was speaking at that event. So yeah, it's uh, and look, here, here's the thing. With my, I have this program. It's called 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge. And I don't tell people to quit drinking. I just encourage people to quit drinking for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, here's what happens. And by the way, I put about almost 10,000 people through this now um, in three years since I've had this program. Um, most people at the end of 30 days do go back to drinking. However, they go back at a far reduced rate than before. So they're now no longer relying on alcohol to relieve stress. They're no longer relying on alcohol to socialize they now have a better relationship with alcohol. Having said that, many people stay quit. I've had, I've had many people now who've gone a year, two years, two and a half years, who have not touched a drop of alcohol um, because they started their 30 day no alcohol challenge. And when they started, they only intended to go 30 days, mm -hmm. but because they lost so much weight, they got more energy, they got more clarity, they improved their relationships, they looked better, their skin improved, everything improved. They just said, I'm going to double down on what works. So I, I just want to be, be very clear because this is an important distinction. In distinction. I'm not saying alcohol is bad. I'm just saying if it slows you down, if it prevents you from achieving your goals, if it affects your relationships, then maybe just take a break give it a go and get a glimpse of what it feels like to go alcohol free because maybe just maybe just changing that one habit can set forth a chain reaction of many healthy habits. I 110% agree with you. I mean, I've had a number of health professionals on here from biologists to PhDs to, to just health and fitness nuts. I have a regular sports nutritionist that co-hosts I bring on every single month. I have a regular sports psychologist I can bring on every single month because we love balancing the health and fitness domains. And, and as I hinted, and, and I wouldn't even call her competition, I think you two need to get on the stage together 
But the other person I was just referring to is she's from Melbourne, Australia. I just recorded with her the other night, Sharon Mitchell. She's mm. doing what you're doing. Not in the, she doesn't have your cool 30 day program, but she's helping women specifically. She is specifically mm. targeting women because she called herself a high functioning alcoholic, mm. meaning they were very successful. Her and her husband had huge company making all the money, but she had the alcohol dependency. She was so social with her alcohol and she put on the weight and et cetera, et cetera, as you hinted. So uh, it got bad and it got to the point where in her story, she literally was on a hospital bed and they said she was going to die. Mm. She was having, uh, I didn't even notice it existed. I just wrote the notes down. I just got done cleaning the whiteboard. She, um, she was having alcoholic or alcohol seizures. Wow. D didn't even know you can have that. <laughs> I've heard of alcohol, blood poisoning, everything else. No clue. Like she was literally going in and out of alcohol seizures because that occurs when you start going through the withdrawal. Her mm. dependency on the alcohol had gotten so bad that she, if she just tried to take a day off, she'd have seizures. Wow. That's the withdrawal level that she had to go through. So they had, they basically said, listen, when she was in the hospital, she said, she's like, there was two ways coming out of that. She, at, by the next, over the next three days, she was either going to live or she was going to die. Mm. So they, they said, the next three days, we need to detox you, but we have to warn you, you're so bad. We don't know if you're going to make it. I was like, wow, that's powerful. So hopefully, you're impacting people at the same level, right? You're both... I think champions in that market, because let's be real. I, I still haven't a drink, but I've done what you do. I've done 30 days. No problem. I've, I've, I don't like, I don't like being, I don't like being dependent on something. Right. Cause I never even tried a cigarette. So, uh, and I made those mistakes when I was in college and tried having a bunch of drinks and felt like crap the next day, but I, I'm such a health nut. I love mm. doing detox days, fast yeah. day. I'm a yeah. paleo guy. I do ketogenic intermittent fasting. I love, I'm hacking. I, I thrive on it. So if I'm going to do that, I have to remove the alcohol from time to time too, because let's be real. It is a toxin. It, you are literally ingesting a toxin into the body. So if right. you think it's healthy for you, even red wine, I'm like, I'm sorry guys, the studies are wrong. It's, it's red wine's not actually good for you. Yes. There's some healthy attributes to it per se, but in the end you're still ingesting a toxin into the body. Right. That's right. <laughs> and it shows up in your skin. It dehydrates your body's biggest organ, which is your skin. Yep. Um, and you look weathered. You know, it's, it's, it's like all these women around the world and men, you know, are spending all this money on moisturizers, face and moisturizers. Anti-aging, all that stuff. Oh, it's like give me a break. You know what you're going to do? I'll, I'll tell you. You want to you you reduce wrinkles and reduce the sign, visible signs of aging? Mm -hmm. Quit drinking. Yep. It's so simple and drink a bunch of water. It's yeah. amazing. It's like, you know, you have, a, you have a few drinks, you wake up in the morning, your skin's all dry and pasty. You look weathered. Oh, I could tell you. I don't know if I have them. Oh, yeah, no, I don't have them. Because I haven't, I haven't had a drink in like four days. So I, I, if I have um, like Friday night last week, we had friends over, we had everybody hanging out. And yeah, there was probably amongst the people for dinner, there was a bunch of a couple of bottles of red wine we went through. Mm. But then not the next day, two days later, I noticed a ton of shading around the bottom. It wasn't bags. I don't get bags, but it was just darker. So mm. I could, I could tell that I, I notice it. So I agree with you, man. The fit, like look in the mirror. It's right. If you don't like what you're seeing in the mirror, try some healthy changes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm with you, man. I, I love what you're doing. This is so, how long has that program been going on now? Three years, just over three years now. Well, how long did it take you to get it implemented? 30 days. So I, so you did a, but as far as getting it up online and, and yeah, I, I met, I met with a friend of mine. We were sitting in the foyer of the Andaz hotel on, on sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood. And I said to my friend, a lot of people keep asking me about the fact that I don't drink. Maybe I should create a program which helps people to quit drinking for 30 days. And he said, yeah, I love it. So we got a napkin, we got a pen and I, I drew it out and I said, I'm going to do 30 videos and stick it up in a program. And, um, each day I'll, I'll have an email auto responder, send them a video every day, helping them to stay quit, and just holding them accountable. Yeah. For example, day one, Hey, welcome to day one. Here's what happens. Um, or here's what you should do when your friends are encouraging you to have a drink. Hey, it's day seven. 
here are some non-alcoholic drinks you can have at the bar and restaurant tonight yep. and so forth. And I just said, you know what, I'm going to just have this up and running and make my first sale in, in 30 days from now. And that's exactly what happened. Well, and let's be real. And that's my, my coon hound in the background. He's been, he's been quiet all night. So he's, uh, he's probably excited for this because he likes it when we're healthy, energized, because then we take him on long walks and in the park and everything else. So there's, there's other side effects of freeing up from the alcohol dependency is that you have more energy, you're more awake. Um, biggest thing is also saving money. Hello. Mm. Like I tell people that all the time when it comes like, if you're not eating crappy fast food, junk food, alcohol, there's actually a financial benefit to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So whenever I have people say, Oh, I can't believe you buy everything like grass fed and organic. It's so expensive. And I said, is it? Cause I was like, I'm not spending money on all the crap. So all I'm doing is reallocating my, my finances towards better quality sourced food or, mm. or drinks. And the other thing, socialing, right? I'd love to hear your comment on this, but if I'm out socializing, I can still hang, I can still talk. And if I go to the bar, I get water all the time. Like I, I, I actually will go, I'll actually hold two drinks. I'll have like a glass of wine and I'm, mm. I'm going through a whole pint of water and I'll end up going through two or three glasses of water before I even hit a glass of wine. So I tell people, Tommy, cause you got to hydrate right? Yeah. Wine, wine's not going to hydrate me. <laughs> I mean, wine does not hydrate you. That is true. No, no. Yeah. Um, and guess what? The vodka doesn't either, ladies and gentlemen. It's not water. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I'll tell you what the most delicious drink known to man is. It's Ooh. water, ice, and a piece of lime. Like I challenge anyone not to like that drink. Just get a piece of lime, not lemon, but lime. Yep. And the, when the waiter puts it, puts it on there, take out the lime and squeeze it in. So you've got yep. like five or six squeezes of the juice in and then drop it in and stir it around and then just, and get ice and just sip on that. Man, you feel so refreshed. So I'm going to one up that. So I do that. And then I take the lime and I rub it around the rim. I, I'm, oh, an, yeah. I'm, an ex, I'm an ex-bartender. So that's another reason why I don't think I, I used to drink too heavily because I used to serve it to everybody. And I'm like, dear God, you look like crap. I don't want to look like that at the end of the night. I was too busy working. Um, but the other advantage is like you throw in, bruise up some mint, just bruise up a couple leaves, toss that in there too, man. Some lime and some yeah, mint. It's like good. fresh. Yeah. So, and then I have friends of mine that don't like traditional water. So oh. I said, well, then just, you love, they, they, everybody's into these soda machines. Mm. Seltzer water. Every bar has a gun that squirts seltzer water or club yeah. soda or whatever. There, you want your fizzies? There's your fizzies. Not tonic water. Tonic is not healthy. It's full of sugar. So, right. I, have to, clar- so- I have to clarify that for people all the time. Yeah, people think tonic water is good for you. Even no. tonic water has got lots of sugar. Like soda water <laughs> is good. Soda water rocks. And that's really the other piece of, really, people aren't realizing this. You're, what you're helping influence here is not just a no alcohol challenge. What you don't realize is the quantities of sugar that you are consuming accompanying the alcohol. It's, right. it's rampant because I'm a huge supporter of NSNG. Uh, my buddy from LA, uh, Vinny Tortorich, he runs that big fitness confidential podcast. He's the, he guests on Adam Carolla all the time. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he, he trains all the famous people in LA. All, all the, mm-hmm. all the movie stars like hire that guy. He's, he's like, he, he's not married, married, but he's married to uh, one of the original James Bond models so Mm -hmm. anyway point is he is surviving cancer he feels because of him trademarking nsng no sugar no grains because he said grains don't belong in the body etc it gets converted to sugars anyway he's surviving uh leukemia for nine years now and Mm -hmm. he was a big cyclist and everything else and he still got cancer Mm -hmm. the point is when he talked about alcohol if he has alcohol, which is very rare, he mm. makes sure he buys it in a distilled manner, like a high-end scotch or something like that, because at the distillation level, the sugars are removed. In the end, though, he says on his own show, he's like, now, ladies and gentlemen, it's still alcohol. He's like, you're still technically consuming a, a poison if you want to consider it at that severe of a level. He's like, an, an alcohol does not belong in the body. He's like, if you consume it, even when I have my, he calls it, he puts a little life into living. Uh, but he's not having it every single night. <laughs> you know, mm. he doesn't even have it every week, he said. So there's a lot of us health nuts out there who have realized that's like, you don't want to. I, I definitely don't drink before a big workout the next day. Like every Sunday, 
I do what's called a hero's workout at the, my other friend's CrossFit gym. Every Sunday we do one honoring fallen military police fire. These workouts are named after fallen heroes who also loved CrossFit. So if somebody creates a workout in their name, they submit it to the CrossFit organization and then the world, it goes out on the website and then everybody around the world can do this workout in that person's name. So we do a different one every Sunday, man. If I try to go in and do one of these hardcore workouts after drinking, again, you put toxins in the body and now you're expecting your body to perform. It's not going to happen. You're not going to be at a hundred percent. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I mean, you, if, if, if I would just encourage your listener, like just think about even if you only have one or two drinks a night or a day or a few drinks a week, like how is it affecting you? Cause if it just affects you just a little bit, if you just wake up just a little bit later or you're just a little bit more irritable, mm -hmm. or you're just a little bit more weathered in the face, which just affects your confidence just a little bit, or it affects your happiness level just a little bit. All those little bits can add up to you not getting a, a raise at work, mm -hmm. not having the relationship that you want. Or getting not into having, fights. Getting into fights, yeah. not, not, uh, not saving money to, to invest. Um, you know, there's all these little things, incremental things. So again, it's not, alcohol is not the devil, but if it's slowing you down just a little bit, just explore that. And, Take and a hiatus. Take a hiatus. Yeah. Like I said, I've done it. I, like I said, I'm not a, I, I, I love the fact that you're at least reminding people they don't have to stay completely free of it, but learn from that experience and really adapt your lifestyle around it to hack your way. We can't talk about hacking today. Hack your way to a more peak performing lifestyle. And this is what we, we talk about health, business, and lifestyle on this show. Your program is impacting all three of those. You just hinted at it. You, you want for the next month to get recognized more positively in your healthy way of life, or you want to get recognized more positively in the workplace, be less irritable, be more attractive, possibly get that, that promotion or whatever you're going for, uh, or be more successful in business. And then just in general, feel better about your lifestyle, you know, with finances and everything else. I'm not saying this is the end all cure all. It's definitely a program that's going to impact that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I, pre well, I appreciate you, you talking about it and the support. And then if you're listening, yeah, you just, you know, check out 30 day, no alcohol challenge.com and you can join the program or if you don't and you want to do it yourself, do it yourself. But I will say this, um, nothing beats accountability. Just like even I would just, you know, finish this, this four or five day program that I self-development program I did because I had other people in there pushing me, I was able to do it. And I think that's why doing a program of, of sorts, whether it's, you know, the 30 day, no alcohol challenge program, that's mine, or whether it's doing something else or whether it's just getting an accountability buddy, having an accountability buddy or group makes change possible and makes change happen. You don't have to rely on brute willpower, get into a fun, supportive community. We have a closed Facebook group in there where you can talk to other members. There's more than a thousand members in there supporting one another and it's fun. Um, and get that accountability because that's when real, real change happens with accountability. Oh, I definitely agree with that. It's mankind is meant to interact with like you, you, you've been recognized for networking, right? Like I thrive on networking. I love being around other people because mankind is meant to be around other people. You need to be interacting. You need to be connecting and you don't have to be great at it right away. But especially when you're making major lifestyle shifts like your program, then get yourself around other people that are going through it with you. And that's the beauty of technologies nowadays is that you don't have to be in the same time zone, same city, same town, anything, right? It's, a, hey, great, a Facebook group. Like, yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can use Facebook for good. <laughs> right. There are people like James and myself using social media technology platforms as tools, as ways to help other people, personally and professionally. And it sounds like actually your group does both, personally and professionally. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. And so that's different than your inner circle that I saw on your website too, right? That's inner circle is more business focused. Well, yeah, it sounds inner, like you have multiple inner circles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the inner circle is really um, helping uh, entrepreneurs start businesses. And then um, oh. if you're listening in Australia, we, we help Australians in particular launch an Amazon business. We have a, a program called Australian Amazon training. It's at Australian Amazon training.com. And 
and my brother Tristan and I, who, who and we started the, the, the blue light blocking glasses business. Um, oh, we, nice. now, we now coach Australians on how to launch on Amazon because Amazon launched in Australia um, uh, a few months ago now. Um, so yeah, so I coach business, I coach entrepreneurs or people who want to be an entrepreneur, and and more specifically, recently I coach Australians on how to build a, an Amazon business. Oh, wow. I love that. I'm actually in the process of trying to get Amazon. I already have an Amazon business system, but I don't do a lot of business on Amazon, but I'm actually trying to build uh, Vinny Tortorich actually has, he has Amazon linked to his website because he's always talking about products and I do too from time to time. So now Amazon, I don't know if they have it down there yet, but they've released a feature called um, Amazon Influencer. Mm. So if you have enough influence online, they'll build you your own little it's different than the Amazon business page you know, because now I can just then go and click on my favorite products like Swannies. Great. Mm-hmm. That'll be on there. So if I ever talk about certain things and I want to make sure I'm like, Hey guys, go click on my influencer page and all the stuff that I've ever talked about, all my favorite gear, like, you know, Yeti, Yeti mugs I drink water out of and stuff like that. I can link it all there. And then if they buy it through there, I get a you know little percentage off of that. So yeah. And I don't have to create my own products and I don't have to create my own services. So right. I'm a little spin off of what you're teaching. So yeah, lovely. I love it. Yeah. Plus I have like three Amazon warehouses around me because I'm between Philadelphia and New York city here on the Eastern edge of Pennsylvania. And we're just surrounded by industrial parks and warehouses. So we're, we're in a, a nice booming area. So I don't know if you ever heard of Allentown, Pennsylvania. So <laughs> I've heard of Scranton, Pennsylvania. I used to, I was there Boston. this morning. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's the, uh, what TV show was that? The Office, yeah. Um, well, Allentown, if you go old school back, is, was in the Billy Joel song. There was a song called Allentown. Yeah. So. I think but, Joe Biden, the former vice president, was from Scranton, US, uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, I think as well. I might uh, be wrong on that. but anyway. I don't know. I can't remember about that far back. Um, you might have something on that one. Well, so listen, we, we have wrapped a lot and actually even more deeper than I expected to on vulnerability for men. And I'm loving that we dug that deep, man. I'm, I'm uh, excited for you and your growth. This is, this is pretty powerful steps for you. Thank you, Scott. I really appreciate you having me on, on the show as well to talk about it and congratulations to you as well. I, I, I see a lot of similarities in us uh, in terms of, you know, pushing through and vulnerability. It's a, it's a, it's a journey. <laughs> it's, it's a journey. And I, I think for men in particular, I know that you've got men and women listening, but for men in particular, let me tell you this, if you can, if you can research what vulnerability means and then actually practice it, then your relationships with women, whether it's your mother your daughter, your wife, your girlfriend, your colleague, your boss, whatever. I think your relationships with, with women in general are going to improve exponentially. Not, and also with men, men, quite frankly. Um, but, you know, nothing like a bit of um, female motivation to get you, get you moving, right, Scott? I've, I've literally talked to, during that initial shift, I just, threw, just to throw this in there, like, I talked to a couple of women. I'm like, listen, what is the deal with vulnerability and men? And all three women that I asked, all from different lifestyles, all responded with, they said, literally, literally almost, almost verbatim, they said, well, bullshit aside, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry, what? Like, a man who has the balls to just not necessarily soften up, but just be willing to get a little vulnerable, that's hot. And I was like, okay, um, I might be onto something <laughs> <laughs> so if that motivates any of you gentlemen out there that, uh, that might be trying to consider working on things like like james and i are doing just gonna throw that out there so and i did get my girl back and now we're engaged so uh, i love it and i'm not i'm not out there trying to sell a how do you get your girlfriend back in in 20 days thing but um i think a program like yours is definitely much more impactful that if i threw that out there i'd have to kick my own ass so mm-hmm. um but in the end, it's just like, listen, man, just stop being a douche and get more real, get more genuine. And the best part is, you know, you're doing this now. And I think that's going to help you grow everything else you're doing, all your other brands. I mean, I'm a marketing consultant, man. Like I teach people that I'm like, guys, get more real, get more genuine to grow your brand online because that's the power of video. That's why video is so volatile right now because you can't fake it. So it's tying everything together you guys are doing. So your journey is just going to take all these other platforms, to, I think, to the next level here in 18 and beyond. So, um, Thank you, Scott. Appreciate you having me, sir. Yeah, so Levin, I, uh, 
I always honor my co-host to bring the show to a close by letting you, if everybody forgets everything else we talked about tonight, and there's been a lot of great stuff. I can't wait to get the show notes put together, but um, I like to have you guys close out the show with a final thought or closing words. And it could be something all encompassing or in case everybody forgets everything else we talked about, uh, or just maybe a message to move people into the future here. But is there anything that's kind of come out of the top of your head that you want to share with yeah. us? Yeah, I got two phrases, just do it and do it now. Um, and they're, they're two, three word phrases and they're very, very simple. But um, if I look back on my life, all the things that got me, you know, the things that I got were because of just do it. That means despite fear, despite challenges. And then the other thing is do it now, not tomorrow or the next day, do it now. And it might be now just moves the needle just a little bit. It might be having scheduling a phone call for the next day where you're going to make it happen, but do something now, 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 because otherwise it's always something that's just like, yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Get to it. Before you know it, you're 42 years old going, man, I should have done this self-development work work 20 years ago when I said I was going to do it. So just do it, do it now. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, hang tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air, but ladies and gentlemen, that was James Swanick. Okay, check it out at jameswanick.com. Again, we talked about the Swannies. Definitely check out his 30-day noalcoholchallenge.com. Like just at least, here you go. He said, just do it. Just type that in and go, okay? Or if you're, if you're listening to this right now, it's already on the website. So go to lilyfield.com and you click on the little hyperlink and just go watch the video. If nothing else, you get to check out Jennifer Aniston. Uh, <laughs> but then beyond that, just consider doing something different. That's what he's talking about here. Take action, guys. This is what we're talking about in life and business and in lifestyle. Take action. So again, thanks for listening in. Thanks for hanging with James and I. We'll talk to you guys again soon. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, you too can live the fuel. And you're clear of the pod. I let the video just go for extra stuff. But cool. that was awesome, man. I was not expecting us to go down that road. That was spontaneously fun. So yeah, it was, it was. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a great host too. You, you, you know, you speak with depth and clarity and, and insight as I'm honored, man. Cause you've been on the mic or, or at least in, in lots of other ways of mics, <laughs> TV and everything else longer than I have. So I've, I'm always open for feedback and I, I just try to make sure that my co-hosts are welcome. And that's why I do this open format because I want people to hang out and you don't want format cause you don't know when kind of genuine content like this comes up. And you are an exciting shift, my friend. This is, I'm really fired up for you right now. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate that. It's very, very nice of you, Scott. Yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, what's your address? I'll send you out a pair of glasses, even though you've already got some. Um, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll email you, you back. Yeah. I'll, I'll get you a, um, a more attractive pair. At least in, <laughs> uh, I am definitely, uh, when the other guys comes to, like, I, I was like, dude, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm going to go run a chainsaw. I don't know. <laughs> which I do, I do love running a chainsaw. I do volunteer trail work for my local, I'm a huge mountain biker. So I get, I get you know, volunteers together. But I'm like, when I got these, I was like, man, I feel like I can go run a chainsaw right now. Um, but you know, I'll, address? it is, hold on. you can send them to one six, three, six North Cedar crest, like, like the woods. So Cedar C E D A R crest mm -hmm. R C R E S T several words. And, uh, Put number 165 after that. Mm -hmm. And then it's just Allentown, PA, 18104. 18104? You got it. And what, what was the name of the town, sorry? Oh, Allentown. So A-L-L-E-N-T-O-W-N. Pennsylvania, PA, right? You got it. 1636 North Cedar Crest, number 165, Allentown, PA, 18104. That's um, it. Does your fiance sleep okay? I'm still hacking that. So yeah, she were, do, I'll send her a sleeping mask then. Yeah. Oh, you have those. Yeah, All right. think, Are yours the ones that you can, ha they're like, they're raised up. So there's a pocket in front of the eye. So there's nothing no, actually hitting the eyelid. No, or? no, no, we don't have those ones, but our you know what mask, I'm talking about. It's like a 3d thing. Yeah, I do. Uh, but ours was voted world's best high end sleeping mask. So I'll just she's open to that. So okay. I'm willing, I don't so care what it takes. I will figure out, I got to hack her one step at a time. So it's on its way to you. <laughs> that, I'm game for that because I did buy her one of those. They're like a $50 freaking eye mask actually. And, and then she lost it. And then I had to get her another one. 
And then she claims she's going to take it on her plane rides. Because uh, on the 28th this month, we're flying to Colorado for 10 days skiing. We go out every year. So we'll be out in Vail. Um, so that's where like, hey, I want to travel with the glasses. She, she'll use the eye mask on the plane. So that, is your branding on it and stuff? Can I Instagram that stuff? Or? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, I, try, I try and Instagram as much product stuff as I can. So. Because cool. people, people need to learn. So I didn't realize you had that level. But now I am going to send my buddy who has the four-year-old. He's really following my hacking. So whenever I send him stuff, he just goes and buys it. So I'm going to send him your site for the kitty glasses. So, Great. Great. I love yeah. it. Or I'm just going to buy him for his kid. It'll give me an excuse to buy some for his kid. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, awesome. All right, man. Well, dude, this has been great. I, uh, I'm glad we got to connect. And oh, I forgot to add, I didn't get a chance to even plug your podcast, man. I mean, well, no, that's we talk- okay. I, I've, I've put it on, I actually um, paused it about six weeks ago um, oh. for six months. I've had it for three years and, but I just, uh, I, the, my sleep business is, is. It's a lot. It's going, well, it's, it's, and it's also on a curve. So I'm just doubling down on that. So it's okay. Uh, and you so- got, di- you have digital audio content, man. It's podcasts. Like you don't, as long as you don't take it down, people can still keep downloading and listening. So, right. And as long as people know that you're on a hiatus, yeah, that's and right. Plus, you you may decide to come back and reinvent the show and come back in a whole different way, right? Yeah, trust the universe. Sounds like you're doing the right things. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, Scott. Well, thank you, sir. I'm excited, and uh, I I'm really glad we got a chance to connect. So I'm gonna have to email Courtney back and say, hey, she's doing a great job over there at Zippy. Because although it's funny, it sounds like you and I would have connected up sooner or later anyway, because a lot of our circles are overlapping so yeah. are yeah. you coming out to thrive this year um maybe I, I i went to the one the year before last but not this one so we'll see it, oh you were in san diego yeah i was in san diego yeah. i was there so oh. so <laughs> that was my first that was my first drive so and then i was here at this last one i, I call it the shooting thrive unfortunately it was not good timing for us but it was a terrible event but um because it literally ended the night of the shooting so right yeah, it was crazy. But now we're going back to Vegas again. I was actually kind of excited for San Diego, but I don't know. Maybe he'll come up your way. Maybe in another year we convince him to go back to California. Well, we'll run into one another, I'm sure, in person this year at some point. So, um, yeah, look forward oh. to that. Oh, and then um, let me know if you ever want to get connected up with Jack Cruz. I have his email and stuff. I can always. I, I just feel like he needs to get a pair of Swannies. That's what I'm thinking. If you think an email introduction is appropriate, I'll, I'll take it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell him, Hey, well, cause he claimed he had his custom made by somebody and I'm like, well, clearly you got, you must have one of the biggest brands out there. So I feel like, I feel like he should be rocking Swannies. So. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. If you, if you, if you feel like it's appropriate to introduce us on email, then yeah. Oh, cool. heck yeah. Oh yeah. I'll plug you. I plug everybody. <laughs> I tell you all the time, like again, networking, right? I've now have, approaching 160 shows up online. So it's like, I can just use my co-host circle of influence and just say, great, I can get co-hosts connected to co-hosts. And I'm not even including LinkedIn and Facebook or anything else. I'm just talking co-hosts. So um, is there any other shows you were looking to get on? I can, I'm not zippy, but again, I know a lot of podcasters. I've I've spoken at two podcast conferences already. Um, Thank you. I really appreciate the the offer. Um, you know, the, the gold standard really is Joe Rogan or the Tim Ferriss show. Um, oh, man. Aside, aside from those ones, I'll, anyone that has a health centric um, audience would be great. Um, not so okay. much interested in the entrepreneur stuff at the moment, but anyone who has a, has a health podcast that you admire and respect and, or is of significance, I'll, I'll, I'll take that introduction. Also. I'll reach out to, I'm, uh, it takes a little while to get through to him, but I reach out to my boy, Vinny. Uh, they, they actually, they, they just, uh, Mon- Monday's actually, uh, Monday's episode yesterday, they, they plugged me on their show uh, uh, right over the air. It was hilarious. I, Cause I've been trying to convince them to move over to zoom from Skype and they went and name dropped me all over the episode and were thanking me because they, they're finally realizing I'm right and stopped using Skype. <laughs> but, uh, he's got a viral show. His show's been around for six years, heavy in the health and fitness sector. Like I said, he's the trainer to the stars. And, um, like I said, now he's, his, his show has exploded because he's a guest co-host on Adam Carolla's show. So he's mm. like the Joe Rogan level of mm. exposure. So it's all about like the bleed over now. Right. So then, Adam Carolla bleeds over into Vinny and now Vinny's bleeding over to me. So I'm trying to help other people get a little taste of the bleed <laughs> in a positive way. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. 
but no, I, I, I always make it a goal now. Uh, since late last year, I was like, all right, when I end a show, I got, I have a list here of other co-hosts I'm going to get connected over email, but I'm going to add you to the list and I'm going to think of at least one or two other healthy shows I can get you connected with. And, um, the email I sent you back to tonight, that's fine to use. James at James Yeah. Perfect. All right. You got it, sir. Thank well, you, Scott. Go rest your vocals and, uh, well, I have to keep me in a loop, man. I want to, I want to hear about your journey over this, over this, over this year. You've got some excitement coming ahead. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it very much. All right. Well, you take care. Have a good night. See you, Scott. Take care.